A man sleeps with his son in a public restroom. Someone is knocking at the door. He quickly covered his son's ears. Hold on to the door tightly again. Life is really difficult. This is the United States in 1981. Great Depression. There are homeless people everywhere. There are still people starving to death on the street. The then president was on the TV broadcasting a dismal financial report. There is a black man sitting in front of the TV, a face full of melancholy, studying the Rubik's Cube in hand. His name name is Chris Gardner. He's a poor person now, but in the near future, he will become a millionaire. 2006. His story was adapted into a movie. If you feel hopeless in life, be sure to watch this movie. Not long ago, Chris spent all his savings. He bought a large number of medical scanners. He wants to resell it to the hospital. Take the opportunity to make a fortune, resulting in blood loss. Things cannot be sold, can only be left at home. That's it. Chris has become a poor man. The whole family family is living a difficult life. In the past four months, wife forced to take on an extra job. Wife's temper is becoming increasingly irritable. Either a cold face or a mockery towards him. Chris can only work hard to promote. He has to sell at least two devices every month. That's enough to pay rent and childcare. Nowadays, Chris owes two months of rent, twice delayed tax payment. The car was also towed away. There is still a pile of tickets waiting to be paid. And these difficult days, it's just the beginning of his low point in life. This day, Chris is walking on the street. A red Ferrari parked next to me. Looking at the people in the car, Chris asked him two questions. The man smiled and said, I am a stockbroker. You don't need a degree to do this job. As long as you understand numbers and can communicate, that's all. This statement touched Chris. He looked at the entrance of the securities company. People of all kinds. Chris feels that they are very happy. Chris also wants this kind of happiness. The next day, Chris and his wife said, he's going to a securities company for an interview. Chris's wife is in despair. Last time Chris had a whim. Chris bought a bunch of useless medical equipment. Now he's slapping his head again to become a stockbroker. His wife asked him to quickly sell that pile of junk. But Chris has made up his mind. He must become a stock manager. Chris applied for an internship. No education, no experience. Sending a resume is like sinking into the sea. But Chris doesn't give up. He waits downstairs in the company every day, waiting for a month. Chris finally met the HR supervisor. Chris is planning to fight for himself. The supervisor has an urgent matter. Stopped a taxi and had to leave. So he lied that he was on his way. Chris also got into the taxi. In a taxi, Chris has been introducing himself. But the supervisor didn't respond. The supervisor only wants to play Rubik's Cube. 1981. The Rubik's Cube has just come out. Not many people can spell yet. Chris said, why don't you let me try? Before arriving, I can definitely spell it out. The supervisor doesn't believe it at all. But soon, he couldn't laugh anymore. Because Chris, he has quickly put together one side. Next, his hands are as fast as flying. Even the driver keeps looking around. When the car stops, Chris just finished spelling it out. The supervisor was stunned. He looked straight at this young man for the first time. The supervisor got off the car without paying. Chris was stunned. A fare of $18. He can't even afford it. When we reach an intersection, Chris requested parking. Subsequently, he apologized while running. Running into a subway station, the driver is relentlessly pursuing behind him. No way. Chris had to escape into the subway. Scannable. But Chris lost it. One month's living expenses are gone. Chris finally couldn't hold his tension anymore. Roared loudly in the subway. That night, Chris received a call from his wife. She's leaving with the child. Sweat. Rain. Tears falling off Chris's face together. He doesn't understand. Why is he working so hard? Happiness never knocks on its own door. Wait for Chris to come home. The room is already empty. Wife's gone. The wife also took away her son. Fortunately, the HR supervisor called. Notify him to come for the interview the morning after tomorrow. The next day, Chris secretly picked up the child. When cooking, there was a knock on the door. Is it happiness? No. It's the landlord. Chris dragged on the rent for too long. The landlord landlord asked him to pack up and leave. Chris begged the landlord to extend another week's grace. The landlord agreed. The premise is to help him paint the wall. Chris is painting the wall. Suddenly, there was another knock on the door. Is this happiness? No. It's a police officer. Chris delayed the ticket for too long. If Chris doesn't pay the fine again, 
he will have to be imprisoned. Chris has no choice. He had to take out his only savings. Pay the fine. But the check won't be able to go to the bank for verification until tomorrow morning. Before tomorrow, he can't even leave. Chris pleaded for mercy. But the police don't accept any of his reasons. Helplessness. He had to call his ex-wife. Solve the child's settling problem. But even more difficult is tomorrow morning's interview. What should Chris do? Chris stayed overnight in the detention center. Early the next morning, just released. It's time for the interview. No time to take a shower and change clothes. Chris rushed towards the company. At the entrance, everyone around is dressed in suits and shoes. Only he was covered in paint. Out of place. The interviewer looked at his outfit. Very surprised. Chris is open and honest. He said he was detained last night. Because I didn't pay the ticket. The HR supervisor smiled. But the boss is a bit unhappy. He asked Chris many questions. Chris replied generously. The last Last ultimate challenge. If someone come to the interview without even wearing a shirt, I even recruited him. What would you think? This question is very tricky. No answer is good. Fortunately, Chris gave a perfect response. The boss laughed. The interview passed smoothly. Real challenges accompanying it. This company has a six month internship period. No salary during the internship period. What does Chris use to support his family? Chris hesitated for a long time. Chris intends to do his best. He decided decided to sell the remaining six scanners to barely make ends meet. Today, Chris can only do his best. The landlord drove them away. Chris with his son. They checked into a cheap motel. Soon, start of internship. The competition in the company is very fierce. Out of 20 interns, there is only one place to become a regular employee. Assessment results based on performance. What about Chris? He can only work even harder. Because I have to pick up the child, Chris must be within six hours. Complete nine hours of work for others. He is the earliest to arrive at the company in every major. Not drinking water at work. Because Chris doesn't have time to go to the bathroom. Don't hang up on the phone. Save time to pick it up again. After work, Chris received his son. They also have to take the subway and bus. Get in the car for an hour or two. Across the entire city. Only then can they return home. At home, he still needs to learn professional knowledge. Only for internships. Chris is like a gyroscope. Being whipped by life keeps turning around. There is a supervisor in the company who always commands him. Ask him to bring tea, water, and buy donuts. He had to follow suit one by one. This day, Chris contacted a major client. The other party requires him to meet within 20 minutes. Chris, take action immediately. But when Chris leaves, the superior stopped him again. Tell him to park the car. Chris had to agree. When he arrives, still late. Chris didn't see the client. The superior's car was ticketed again. Chris still has to pay a fine. But he didn't give up. Weekend. He visited the client again with his son. The client invited him to watch the ball together. Chris went with us. Although this big order has not been completed. But he also made friends with a group of wealthy people as a result. All future customer resources. Four months passed in a flash. Chris sold all the scanners. Life seems to be improving. However, bad news is coming again. The tax bureau took all his savings. Chris is bankrupt. There's only $21 left in the account. He took his son to the park to relax. Encountered a homeless man with a scanner in hand. This is the one he lost on the subway. Joy descended from heaven. He quickly grabbed the equipment. Chris is planning to sell it for survival. Unfortunately, the scanner is broken, cannot be sold that night. Because Chris doesn't have the money to pay the rent, he was kicked out by the boss. Chris now becoming a homeless wanderer. He brought his son to the subway station to comfort him. Playing games with my son. Chris looks good. Says there's a dinosaur chasing after him to hide in a cave. He took his son with him. Entered the public restroom. Spread a layer of toilet paper under your body. This is the bed where father and son slept tonight. Someone is knocking on the door outside. He can only cover his son's ears. Chris stretched out his leg and pressed against the door. Life is too difficult. Chris couldn't help but burst into tears. The next day, he took his son to the shelter. On the street, the homeless man formed a long queue. When it's almost Chris's turn, the person in charge said it's almost full inside. Only four more can be charged. At this moment, someone wants to take Chris's position. Chris got into a fight with him. Fortunately, an old man identified a homeless man as violating 
breaking the rules. Chris has been admitted to the shelter. He coaxed his son into bed. Chris is repairing the scanner in the hallway. Daytime. He worked tirelessly. Night. Chris took his son to grab a bed. When crossing the road, Chris's son's toy fell on the road. Chris is anxious. There's no time to consider it at all. On the bus, his son couldn't help but cry. I don't know how long these days have passed. Soon, Chris is so poor he can't afford to eat. He ordered a small pizza for his son. Chris is hungry. Finally, he can only sell blood. The money he exchanged for it. Chris bought a light bulb. That very evening, Chris fixed the scanner. The light of hope illuminated the dressing room and soon to illuminate his life. Chris quickly sold this device. They bid farewell to the shelter. I checked into a hotel. Father and son leaned against the soft sofa. Sweet sleep. The internship period is about to end. This day, the superior asked Chris to go to the office. He panicked all of a sudden. Busy hands remembering busy feet putting on a suit. Waiting for the final pass. Can he get this only chance to become a regular? Can you also put on your shirt tomorrow? Tomorrow will be your first day of formal employment. Welcome. Hear the good news. Chris didn't laugh. His eyes were bloodshot, almost crying out. When shaking hands, tear marks also appeared on his face. Having gone through so many hardships, he finally hear happiness knocking on the door. Ending. Father and son walking hand in hand, passing by a black man. He is the prototype of Chris. Chris Gardner. His experience. Same as in the movie. Nowadays, he is already a billionaire. Actually, the main theme of the movie. Just like the title of the movie. Happiness does not come because of complaints. The real key. It's on me.